You've seen unicorns, haven't you? Now, not the mythical horse with a horn in its head. I'm talking about the Silicon Valley tech startups that have scored billion dollar valuations even before going public. But have you seen Norwalks, the unicorns of the north? They are the billion dollar marijuana companies of Canada. Yes, marijuana stock trading is an actual thing in the global investing world where the only two marijuana stocks that have shown positive earnings are Canadian companies. In a once abandoned Hershey chocolate factory in the small town of Smith Falls, Ontario, the world's largest legal marijuana producer grows, trims, processes, packages, and ships weed across the Great White North and now to many parts of the rest of the world. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's most controversial campaign promise, Canadian Maple Leaf, another leafy friend, and thus came the introduction of the Cannabis Act, a bill to legalize the growth, sale, and consumption of recreational marijuana to be approximately $23 billion. Here are some of the highlights from Deloitte's report. Synthetic opioids, especially considering the currently ongoing opioid epidemic that is devastating North America, where overdoses from drugs such as heroin and, and in particular prescription painkillers such as oxycodone and morphine have killed more than 70,000 people in the US in 2016 alone, where the company did everything from distributing free pills to launching aggressive marketing campaigns and making advertising journals. Salesmen were given big bonuses for selling more drugs and doctors were flown to conferences to learn how to talk about the benefits of being prescribed this painkiller. Purdue managed to, get, to recklessly convince the then sitting FDA chief Dr. Curtis Wright that their new wonder drugs smooth and sustained dosing would substantially lower the addiction rates caused by general opioid pain medications. But their claim was not only false. She said, it's not like, like they're going out to buy some cocaine on the street. They're going to the doctor for a torn ligament in their shoulder or migraines or having a tooth pulled. Today, the opioid epidemic has become America's worst health crisis ever. Accidental drug overdoses killed more people in 2015 than HIV AIDS at its 1995 peak. The reason why I bring this up is because it has been found that the states that have legalized medical marijuana have 23% lower opioid-related hospitalizations per capita, as published earlier this month in the Journal of Drug and Alcohol Dependence. Depression, anxiety, oxidative stress, inflammation, chronic pain, neuroprotection, insomnia, and addiction. In a comprehensive Harvard-led systematic review of 28 studies examining the efficacy of exocannabinoids, now to anybody that has been following this market or got in about a year ago when Canada first said it planned to go ahead with legalization, Canada's largest producer by market cap, as we spoke earlier, have risen by about 300%. Aurora Cannabis and Afria are up by more than 400%. When I was researching and writing this feature, one of the world's largest cannabis conventions happened to be taking place in Toronto. The convention was organized by Lift.co, a new age media slash educational company catering to cannabis producers, companies, patients, and dispensaries. Let's go check them out. Hello everybody, today we're at the Lift.co exposition in Toronto, one of the largest marijuana trade shows in the world. Companies attending this conference range from the billion dollar licensed producers as we discussed earlier to ancillary services such as grinders, security, lighting, greenhouse systems and consultancy services. There's about 337 established marijuana players present at this conference today. Every cannabis employee and entrepreneur present at this conference is bright-eyed about the future that the Canadian legalization of marijuana will bestow upon their business. The hopes and dreams at these boots and panels run high, as this is the first time in history. Medical marijuana market under the ACNPR and of course we're going to graduate into the rec market when that uh, is uh, opened up to us in uh, 2018. The chief engagement officer of Tweeds, uh, a company whose parent company is the famous Canopy, the billion dollar unicorn of the marijuana industry. Thank you so much for joining us today, Adam. We spoke earlier. There's an incredible amount of diversity in this industry, where every dollar spent on the plant results in several dollars spent on supporting and ancillary businesses. Now let's go talk to one such business that's in the packaging space for medicinal marijuana, Pharmapax. And I'm here with Navin Pantil, the Director of Business Development at Pharmapax. And everyone's excited 
uh, just like us. Uh, and we basically come from a pharmaceutical background, as, uh, as you mentioned, Tanya, uh, and we would like to uh, pivot into this industry. A big part of packaging is the branding, is, is the, uh, you know, the aesthetic of the, of the exterior. And I think uh, definitely those are going to be some major concerns uh, that Health Canada has. Uh, it's that as time goes on, cannabis will be treated and treated more and more so as a commodity. For because of possibly stricter regulations on key elements such as marketing and packaging, recreational cannabis may not truly allow producers to differentiate themselves and create these appealing brands. Therefore, the winner in this sector might likely be the lowest cost, most efficient producer. Let's sit down with two experts to discuss the science, intellectual property, and legal protection that is likely to come hand in hand with the cannabis market. Today we're with Steve Narayan, a prominent marijuana researcher in Canada. We're also with David Wood, a lawyer and a patent agent. It looks like growth patterns and how it's grown, cultivated and what it can possibly produce, the limits and extents of this plant. That's, uh, that's mainly what I focus on in research. Uh, some of the work that, that I've been known for in the past was, uh, was uh, the research at Tweed and that was directly how, uh, how is this plant cultivated under different light sources. How exactly do you see um, law being enforced to protect uh, the intellectual property that is created from R&D in this space? Or creating cannabis oil and then selling that. Each of those steps can be optimized and any of those optimizations could be protected with patents or just kept secret. So it'll be O2 cycling schedules, anything. It could be the lights themselves, it could be fertilizers, and then more on the product end, various formulations of cannabis oil. I mean, they're all different. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be worth protecting with patents. Some of them may end up having drug identification numbers as per se pharmaceuticals one day. Doing is giving Canada a chance to build innovation capital before anyone else in the planet. That when the world that does come to terms with marijuana, Canadian companies will be far ahead of the learning curve and be able to outsource their expertise internationally. Markets, because obviously the United States and that is, is quite saturated in terms of they've got lots of capacity. Um, so we were looking at the new markets like Germany and Australia um, that are coming online. Obviously Germany right now because it's big and it's popular and they don't yet have growing ca uh, capacity. And recreational use under the federal law. And it still seems like a risky play under the administration of Trump it's for a potential battle with state governments such as Colorado that have seen an infusion of an incredible amount of tax revenue from recreational sales. This brewing conflict could distract industry growth in the U.S. Now, let's speak to the CEO of Lyft, the brain behind this massive Canadian exposition and for creating a community out of Canadian cannabis industry players. Meet Mate Oluru. It's really commendable what you've been able to put up now that we're sitting at the end of this conference. So starting off, what is your highlight moment of these two days or three days um, that uh, that really brings you so much joy to see, you know, to see all of this work come to fruition? Right. Uh, it's a good question. I don't think I could pick just one. Um, so we had uh, eight panels, as you mentioned, with different panels from around the world speaking on topics, uh, investing, branding, pharma and mm -hmm. policy and so on. Uh, and the investing panel in specific, I think one one thing that we teased out was people that look at this market with still some form of scrutiny or apprehension. Um, although there are regulations that are being introduced that make this industry mainstream. Uh, in this industry versus a lack of information. So what that means is, you know, no matter the type of stakeholder you are, whether you're a business or a patient, somehow misinformation is, you know, hurting your development. The expo is faces a cannabis and put it up uh, in the video. It's awesome. And, and on the cover, uh, we have Leslie and Piper, they're both uh, cannabis consumers, medical cannabis consumers. The world's first marijuana ETF was launched recently under the ticker HMMJ. Life requires that you create the highest yielding as well as the most risk-free portfolio for your clients. What is your justification for including marijuana stocks in your clients' portfolios? Uh, well, thank you for asking that question. You're absolutely right. When we meet um, clients, they're typically they're giving us their life savings to manage for them. So we always have to consider and manage them in the most prudent manner. We've been looking at marijuana for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Many marijuana companies were at one time even in the penny stock range, which is as speculative as you can get, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. Yeah. 
However, we've seen some stocks go from as low as $2 to $17. So these are projecting in their, their ratios mm -hmm. and their fundamentals, mm -hmm. as well as what they have in the pipeline. The most important characteristic is how big of a low-cost producer the cannabis company is. At $7.50 a gram and slightly undercutting the black market, they're doing this with a single channel of distribution today as POS stocks officially went on sale. Reasons for the plunge of a six month trading range. Every time the cannabis sector has tested this area, prescriptions for OxyContin falling by the droves, it will come as no surprise. If you don't want to put money into it yet and still play the market, you should look into the Stock Wolf Marijuana Challenge, which is like fantasy football, but for the stock market. It's free to play and you can win some incredible prizes such as a trip to Las Vegas and up to $4,000 in cash.